Welcome. In this video, we will talk about how to build foundations and their types, with an explanation of each type. The foundations are divided into two parts. The first section is deep foundations, and the second is shallow foundations. Shallow foundations are constructed where soil layer at shallow depth, up to 1.5 hidden, is able to support the structural loads. The depth of shallow foundations are generally less than its width. An isolated foundation can be engineered to protect sensitive machinery from external vibrations, passive isolation, or reduce vibrations and prevent them from being transmitted to the surrounding environment, active isolation. Isolated foundations are a vibration isolation solution, frequently used across industrial, construction, and power generation sectors. The system comprises of a concrete inertia block to which equipment or machinery is rigidly or softly connected based on the application. Shear walls carry horizontal seismic forces downwards to the foundations. The overturning effects on shear walls are quite large. Thus, design of their foundations requires special foundations. A combined footing supports two columns. It is used when the two columns are so close to each other that their individual footings would overlap. A combined footing is also provided when the property line is so close to one column that a spread footing would be eccentrically loaded when kept entirely within the property line. By combining it with that of an interior column, the load is evenly distributed. A combined footing may be rectangular or trapezoidal in plan. A strap or cantilever footing consists of two isolated footings connected with a structural strap or a lever. The strap connects the two footings such that they behave as one unit. The strap is designed as a rigid beam. The individual footings are so designed that their combined line of action passes through the resultant of the total load. A strap footing is more economical than a combined footing when the allowable soil pressure is relatively high and the distance between the columns is large. In some instances, columns lie eccentric to the center of the footing. Footings that are not concentrically loaded are known as eccentric footings. In addition, when footings are subjected to an axial load P and bending moment M or lateral force H, the footing will experience unbalanced stress distributions along the base of the footing. This can also be achieved with an axial load acting at an eccentricity E from the centroid of the footing. A strip footing is provided for a load-bearing wall. A strip footing is also provided for a row of columns which are so closely spaced that their spread footings overlap or nearly touch each other. In such a case, it is more economical to provide a strip footing than to provide a number of spread footings in one line. A strip footing is also known as continuous footing. A mat or raft foundation is a large slab supporting a number of columns and walls under the entire structure or a large part of the structure. A mat is required when the allowable soil pressure is low or where the columns and walls are so close that individual footings would overlap or nearly touch each other. Mat foundations are useful in reducing the differential settlements on non-homogeneous soils or where there is a large variation in the loads on individual columns. A deep foundation is a type of foundation that transfers loads from superstructures to the earth a greater depth from the surface than a shallow foundation does to a subsurface layer or a range of depths. Compared to shallow foundations, deep foundations have the merits 
of being suitable for more adverse soil conditions and less site constraints. Pile foundations are relatively long and slender members constructed by driving preformed units to the desired founding level or by driving or drilling in tubes to the required depth, the tubes being filled with concrete before or during withdrawal or by drilling unlined or wholly or partly lined boreholes which are then filled with concrete. End bearing piles are piles that rely on the resistance of the soil or rock at the tip of the pile to support the load. They are usually driven or bored into the ground until they reach a hard layer, such as bedrock or dense sand. The length and diameter of the pile depend on the load and the soil conditions. End bearing piles are suitable for sites where there is a clear and strong bearing layer at a reasonable depth and where the upper layers are not too soft or compressible. Friction piles are piles that rely on the friction between the surface of the pile and the surrounding soil to support the load. They are usually driven or bored into the ground to a depth that is sufficient to mobilize enough friction. The length and diameter of the pile depend on the load and the friction angle of the soil. Friction piles are suitable for sites where there is no distinct bearing layer or where it is too deep or too weak and where the upper layers have some frictional strength. The advantages and disadvantages of end bearing and friction piles depend on the site conditions and design requirements. End bearing piles can achieve higher load capacity than friction piles, but may require more material and equipment to reach the desired depth and may be affected by scour or settlement of the upper layers. On the other hand, friction piles can be more economical and flexible than end bearing piles as they can use the available soil strength along the pile length. However, they may have lower load capacity than end bearing piles and may be influenced by changes in soil moisture or temperature. A piled raft foundation combines two foundation building techniques into a hybrid design suitable for specialized circumstances. The raft or spread foundation spreads the load of the building across the ground. Think of it as a raft floating on the ground supporting a structure. Piles are columns extending below the ground surface that connect at the top of the building. A piled raft foundation uses both methods to support the building.